Right, it's the last day of April everyone. And I hadn't been here since the end of March on the Quantox. I've been busy moving. It's been a really hectic time actually, so... I haven't been here since nearly the end of March, so it's over a month. And this is the last day of April, it's the 1st of May tomorrow. And I'm trying to do a day in each month. So, it'll probably be towards the end of May when I get up here another time to do a video of, uh, of the Quantox of Holford area. I've videoed this little walk a few times now. But I thought I'd just introduce this today. It's not going to be doing any real exploring. It's just getting images of the spring, listening to the birds and all that sort of thing. So that's what I'm trying to do. Really try and do a month, at least one visit a month if I can. While I can, while I've still got Alberta, which is a whole year, at least. So I am going off in my van as well, so shortly, on family tree trips to Cambridgeshire, Suffolk, Huntington, Northamptonshire. On the trail of Matilda of Huntington, actually. Um, and she was given that title, it was handed down to her from her father, Wolfiolf, Earl of Huntington. And um, it was passed down, it has been passed down, I think, oh, I'm just trying to remember if it was Edward the Confessor or somebody like that. The title was, it's ancient anyway, I know that. And Matilda inherited it. She was given the title Countess of Huntington or something like that she was. So I decided to go to Huntington, which is also the birthplace of Oliver Cromwell, by the way. Who, when I was a school child, exploring history, I, um... Isn't that lovely, the moss there on those banks? Isn't that lovely? What a lovely little scene that is. Um, I, I, I was into Oliver Cromwell at the time, in the New Army. And uh, the parliamentarians. But uh, anyway, so he, it was his birthday. It says, this history there, uh, I don't know what I'll find out about Matilda. Maybe not a lot. She was given the title. It doesn't necessarily mean she hung out there much. I mean, she had two husbands. Simon St. Liz, the first one. He built Northampton Castle. He also built a church there on the model of um, the Holy Scepter of Jerusalem, a rounded tower church. There aren't many in the country. There's another one at Cambridge. Um, so I should be hoping to see all that when I go to Northampton. I'll be going to uh, stay at St. Neots. And then um, I'll be getting a train to Huntington. It's only just up the road. It's only about £2.60 for a single. Probably, say, a fiver or less for return. But I'm going to drive to Northampton. Apparently, it's not a direct route. It takes you hours on a train. You have to change about twice. It takes you about three hours to get there. There's only three trains a day. And they say it's cheaper and quicker to drive. They said it'd take you 40 minutes or something or something like that, 40 minutes to an hour. It's 40 miles away, so I think it was more like an hour it would take. Um, I'll, get, I'll, I'll do it early, get there early, because I don't know, I've never been there before. So I always get to a place like 6 in the morning, find a parking, and look around a place while it's dead quiet. That's what I normally do. It's a good way of doing it, actually. Just that you've got to be up early before all the traffic you see that's the idea of getting there about six or seven to avoid everyone rushing around in the town centre especially when I don't know it anyway that's uh, a little bit of news 
that will be happening. And of course I do do lots of video footage, take lots of photos, get lots of um, leaflets, pamphlets, booklets when I go anywhere. Um, I use your souvenir, a tea towel or a cup or both. And uh, I try and dig up as much as I can. So I know there's quite a bit about Simon St. Liz. Of course, Matilda went on to marry David I of Scotland. Um, she was this, on the crest of her uncle, who was King Henry I at that time, William the Conqueror's. So, Uncle or cousin? Just trying to think a minute. No, that must be her cousin because, um, or a second cousin or something, because. Adelaide was her great grandmother, or her, or her grandma. Adelaide was her grandmother, I think. Yes, Adelaide was her grandmother, and Adelaide was William the Conqueror's sister. So Henry the First, William the Conqueror's son. Could have been her second cousin or first cousin once removed, something like that. And they'll have to look it up again. Makes your brain twitch when you got to think. I'm just looking up here at this beautiful scene. It's just up there in the trees is where you'll get deer. So they'll hear me now. They would have heard me ages ago. <laughs> Sheila's back. I did have one deer follow me for ages once. It felt like it was following me. Uh, I, I, it would never keep still enough for me to get a picture of it properly. It's creeping about up there though. Right, anyway, so that's a bit of news. What else? What's happening in the world? Brexit's still going on. Nobody likes to talk about it anymore. It's like um, one of those bad words. It's like a swear word almost now. Um, nobody wants to hear about it anymore. It's giving people nervous breakdowns apparently. Um... It's a dirty word now. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's been a few things going on with um, bombings in Sri Lanka. Uh, two to three hundred people were blown up recently in a, in a Christian church. Um, in New Zealand, there was a mosque that was um, attacked and lots of people killed. So it's like retaliation going on. There's uh, going to be more of this going on now. And uh, basically, the, the world's in a bit of a state. Um, I was listening to the David Attenborough documentary the other day. That was quite depressing, to be quite honest. If we don't get our finger out and do something soon, we're going to... We're going to be on a course to extinction, for sure, when the, the planet heats up more than another degree or something. It's not going to be good, you know. And all this beauty might seem okay, but things are being affected by this uh, change in the climate that's happening, which could become irreversible. There could be a tipping point, apparently, the scientists talk about, where you can't go back. So... Yeah, there's all that going on around us, subtly happening, yeah, but it might be a natural phenomenon though, could still be a natural phenomenon, no, I mean we're blaming it on the greenhouse gases and the human footprint and all that, but isn't it, is it just not natural, you know, like the seasons, you know, the planet's going to be in flux. But they're saying it's a build-up of carbon dioxide and possibly methane now as well, which could escape from the permafrost and kill us all <laughs> as the ice melts, apparently. Uh, we're worried about carbon dioxide, but apparently the methane will be lethal. So uh, if it kills everything off, no birds, no bees, no trees, then we're in for a rough ride in the future. Our descendants are. That's what came over in that documentary. Anyway, happy 
end on a happy note. It's the last day of April and I'm out having a walk at Holford over and out. <laughs>